Hi, thank you for picking my video on 10 Bible verses about the covenant. It is a very interesting video and I hope you will be blessed by the verses. It is a blessing for all who read and live the Word of God. Hallelujah. The first verse we're going to look at is Genesis chapter 9 verse 13. And it says the following, I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be the sign of the covenants between me and the earth. We know very well that this refers to the covenant God made after the great flood of the entire world. In this great flood, many people died, and God promised that he would not punish the land in such a way because he felt bad for the people. He did not want to kill that many people with the flood ever again. And as a promise to that, he created a rainbow. And the rainbow is a sign of the covenant between God and us that he will no longer destroy the world with a flood. Amen. And the next verse we're going to look at is in Deuteronomy 31 verse 8. And it says the following, The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Hallelujah. This is a fine verse uplifting and giving you hope and giving you strength and giving you courage to believe that God is with you regardless. The Lord himself goes before you. The word of God is, is truth. It is not a lie. If you believe in God, God is with you. Hallelujah. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. That means regardless of what happens, God is always there for us. Thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. The third verse we're going to look at is Psalm chapter 103, verses 17 to 18. And it says the following, But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear Him, and His righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenants and remember to obey his precepts. Not only do we have a covenant with God, but we must also obey his precepts, his commandments, and his instructions as to living a holy life. Doing the Ten Commandments and doing his will is part of our life as a Christian, as a God fearing Christian. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. The fourth, uh, the, fourth, the fourth verse we're going to look at is Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9. And Deuteronomy is in the Old Testament. And it says the following. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is faithful. God keeping, He is the faithful God, keeping His covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love Him and keep His commandments. We must remember to love God, to appreciate Him for all He does for us, for His mercies, for His love, for His forgiveness. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is good every day. Every day God is good. Hallelujah. Thank you God. Praise God. The next verse we're going to look at is Hebrews chapter 8 verse 6. And it says the following. But in fact, 
the ministry Jesus has received is as superior to theirs as the covenant of which he is mediator is superior to the old one, since the new covenant is established on better promises. Hallelujah. The Hebrews chapter 8 verse 6 re refers to the new testaments, the new covenant with Jesus Christ, that if we believe in him, he will save us from our sins. He will save us from going to hell because of our sins. He will forgive us our sins. In the Old Covenant of the Old Testament, we must still keep His commandments and His laws, but unlike the Old Covenant, where if you sinned or broke one of the commandments, one of the laws of God, then you were condemned and there was hardly any salvation for you. But through Jesus Christ, there is salvation for all who believe in Him. For He works on our behalf. He intercedes to God the Father on our behalf, that we may be blessed and do His righteous deeds for the betterment of our lives, for the betterment of all humanity. Amen. The sixth verse we're going to look at is Hebrews chapter 9 verse 5 I mean verse 15 and it is also in the New Testament like the previous verse quotation and it says the following for this reason Christ is the mediator of a new covenant that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. Well, this refers back again to the Old Testament, the Old Covenant of, of, the, of the, the Old Testament, basically, uh, where if you sinned, there was no, there was no salvation for you unless the high priest shed the blood of a lamb in the temple on your behalf or shed the blood of a dove on your behalf. Now Jesus Christ shed his blood and that blood is for us salvation before the eyes of God. It was a sacrifice of life for our eternal salvation and holiness and blessings come upon our lives once we believe in Jesus Christ. The seventh verse we're going to look at is in Exodus, the Old Testament, chapter 19, verse 5. And it says the following, Now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession although the whole earth is mine. Hallelujah. God is grace. He blesses us and he makes us fortunate to be his chosen ones, his personal disciples through Jesus Christ. Although the entire earth belongs to God, he has made us his special people, the land of Israel, draft, grafted in through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We belong, we all belong to the land of Israel in the name of Jesus Christ. And the name of Israel is also our inheritance for God has chosen it so. Hallelujah. As he says, the whole earth is mine. It's not like some people that say that the enemy of our souls rules the world. He influences the world, but he does not rule it. The world belongs to God, and he rules it in the name of Jesus Christ. The eighth verse we're going to look at is Paul chapter 31, verse 1 in the Old Testament. And it says the following, 
I made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a young woman. God bless him. Hallelujah. That was Hope's covenant with God. It's a covenant that is an example for us, all men and women, in the name of Jesus Christ. This is more prominent amongst men who look at a younger woman in lust and can sometimes commit adultery or some other fornication, some sin, some sexual sin of that nature, which is an abomination and will condemn us to hell. God is good. We can, if you have problems with lust or any of those sexual sins or issues, you can present it to, the, to God and God will take care of that sin, of that problem that you have with sex. If it is overburdening to you and you're just totally filled with temptations and desires that you cannot control, ask God to help you and He will help you. You'll be liberated and free of such passions in the name of Jesus Christ. Because God, Jesus, through Jesus Christ, came to let make us free for our own benefits, to be holy before God, to be dedicated to God, to serve God. Amen. And the ninth verse that we're going to look at is in the Old Testament, and it's Genesis chapter 9, verse 11. And it says the following, I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. Hallelujah. Praise God. A, a, a flood the size to destroy the earth is a huge flood. And God promised that He will never again bring forth a flood of that size to destroy the earth. Let it be known that recently, due to climactic changes and pre-tribulation situations and the time, the pre-tribulation time we're living, there have been a lot of floods worldwide. There have been some persons on YouTube who have presented videos of the, the two preachers, the two witnesses, they're on YouTube. They have given videos regarding the floods that have overtaken lots of parts of the world. Many people have died, but it is because the judgment of God is at hand. But He will not bring forth a flood to destroy the entire earth. Amen. Praise God. The tenth verse we're going to look at is in the Old Testament, and it's in Exodus chapter 34 verse 28 and it says the following Moses was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights without eating bread or drinking water and he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenants the Ten Commandments the Ten Commandments was the covenant brought forth through the hands of Moses and his presence on Mount Sinai. Hallelujah. Praise God. Holy Mount Zion. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is good every day. Every day God is good. A covenant is a promise between you and God to fulfill the agreement of the covenant, of the promise. And the promise is that you will follow the Ten Commandments and not break any of the laws, and you shall be blessed. And in that covenant, we continue on with Jesus Christ, who if by chance we should sin, He is our lawyer and will intercede on our behalf for our forgiveness if we ask Him for forgiveness of our sins. Hallelujah. That is the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. The old covenant, we didn't have Jesus. In the new covenant, we have Jesus, 
and he can intercede on our behalf to forgive us our sins and help us be grafted in to become part of God's kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, this is all for today. I hope this video has been a blessing to you and know that you have a covenant with Jesus Christ of salvation, and eternal life, and general well-being. Jesus said, I have come to give you life and life in abundance. And that abundance includes everything. Hallelujah. Your general well-being in all its facets, God can provide. You have to believe and He will bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching and until next time, God bless you.